What's up guys, Single Player Nacho here with the first edition of Resident Evil Explorer, where I'll be looking at how the U3 boss fight works off screen and small gameplay mechanics you wouldn't be able to catch during a normal playthrough. The U3 boss fight is one of the deadliest boss fights in the game because of how compact the area is in which you encounter this thing. A suspended cargo port with boxes that only leave a couple of feet in between you and the grotesque monster itself. There's also some violent death scenes, which makes this sequence hard to forget. So, we begin by walking up to the cargo port where Leon finds Ashley's tracking beacon on the floor, prompting the perfect opportunity for U3, or as Sadler refers to, IT, blindsides Leon in the most unselfiest of ways. The boss fight has been initiated, and hey, don't worry, Leon was not hurt during the filming of this video because he can't be hurt. His collision box was killed, so it's just swinging at the wind, essentially. The first thing you'll notice off screen is the U3 tires itself out and plots itself on top of a freighter box. Once it's out of sight, it'll menacingly stare at nothing and does not track Leon's movements. It's a pretty suspect animation because developers knew for a fact that players wouldn't even catch a glimpse of it out of pure fear and wanting to get out of each shipping yard as fast as possible. So that's one of its attacking sequences, well, check this out. Yeah, that's a strange animation to say the least. So sometimes the U3 will stick around and chill on the freighter boxes, but when it wants to give Leon a chance to actually get things done, it flies? and disappears from the map entirely. Now, from a technical standpoint, the U3 disappears into thin air to save graphical memory. That's my assumption. If it doesn't need to be there, why render its animations and textures? This disappearing act was most likely placed to give players an opportunity to finish objectives without being annoyed by the U3 every five seconds. You'll still hear its creepy breathing sounds, but don't worry, it's not actually there. I hope this helps. One thing to note, light sources throughout the map have been turned off, giving this spooky atmosphere we wouldn't be able to see from a normal playthrough. Only a few items glow in the now darkened map. This even includes areas we have yet to reach. The chains that suspend this makeshift cargo transport already have an interesting detail to them. The texture's opacity fades as the chains get more and more elevated. It's kind of strange. So we're at the second freighter section of the fight, and I thought I'd play a mini game with the U3. Can I make it destroy each and every ceiling grate? Because something you probably didn't notice is that with each quick time event where the U3 tries to grab Leon, the ceiling grates actually stay destroyed. While it was difficult at first, I was able to catch U3's ceiling grab animation, and it's a standard appear out of thin air type deal. The results? I was able to get it to destroy most ceiling grates, but one thing I learned is that it eventually gets bored of trying to grab you and nothing really happens until you exit the area. At the final freighter sequence, the U3 decides to bring out the big guns and transforms into an even more grotesque creature with scorpion pincers. The only new addition to this area is the opened freighter box, which you might think it's safe to sort of hang out there while it wreaks havoc, but check this animation out. It would really suck not to have infinite health right now. After getting rid of the U3, or at least assuming that it's done for, it falls into the abyss. I tried finding something down there, but it's nothing but fog and despair. The first thing that popped into my mind during this last sequence is how it buries itself underground and attacks Leon from below. And check this out. So it buries itself and lays dormant like a fetus while the pincers erupt from the ground and still, its entire body is motionless besides that disgusting pouch. It continues to pulsate even when it's out of sight. I always find little animations like this intriguing because the devs could have only rendered the pincers and not the full U3 body, but it's there and it's definitely underneath you the entire time. Eventually though, the U3 is destroyed thanks to the infinite health and infinite ammo and it's reduced to only its scorpion pincers underneath the rubble. Why not claim those well-earned pesetas left behind? How did your first encounter with U3 go? Comment down below your thoughts and suggestions for other exploring videos. I'll most likely look into the backstory of IT if there is one, and that'll be a separate lore video. Thank you guys for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and as always, stay single.